Hi everybody, welcome back to part 10 of the Revel Flower Class build. This is the 144 scale kit. And in this episode I want to carry on where I left off. Last week I managed to fit all the superstructure parts, including the bridge uh, and the base of the radar tower here. Uh, but in this part I want to carry on and do a little bit more on the forecastle deck. Here in front of the wheelhouse there are some pillars and supports to fit uh, and some lockers to build and also some shields that go along the front and also at the side uh, of the bridge. Doing all that work in fitting the shields will enable me to connect the shields with the front uh, element of the bridge structure here. There are some supports uh, which go down onto the shield so I want to get all that done. So quite a bit of work with the Pontos set this week. So we'll get over to the bench, get the Pontos kit out and let's see what we've got to do next. Okay, so this is the area that uh, we're interested in this week. The area here under the bridge and in front of the wheelhouse. And we have a number of details to fit here on the front of the bridge structure, which join down, as I said, to a shield which runs along the front and behind the shield there are a number of lockers and a couple of hatches I think. So this is the shield that we're going to be building this week. There are a number of lockers that go behind it. Uh, so you can see it's just a right angle structure and as usual with Pontos we've got a number of ribs to fit. Uh, and we've got a base for the davit here to uh, build as well. And we've also got this locker to build uh, here, which I believe is probably a locker, an ammunition locker for the forward gun, uh, which is mounted on a platform just ahead. We've also got this base for the davit here, which is a revel part. And there are also a number of lockers uh, and hatch, I think, to go behind the shield here. So these are the Pontos instructions for the lockers. You can see them positioned here behind the shield. And there are three of one type and one of this type, the slightly larger one. And there's also a little hatch to build. There's also this locker here, which is entirely made from etched brass. Presumably that's missing from the Revel kit. So the first thing to do, I suppose, is to get the Revel uh, plastic cut out for these uh, lockers number one and two. So we should have four parts altogether for those. Uh, and we'll cut the brass parts out and get those made up. It's a slightly uh, strange uh, sprue layout from Revel. We've got three parts which are just the same and one of them is on the E sprue and the other two are on the uh, two J sprues. So it's slightly strange how uh, those are provided, but anyway, these are the parts that we need. This is the larger locker. Just get all the sprue gate attachments off. And these are the doors that we need for these lockers. So these doors for these lockers have separate latches which are these here and will need to be bent over. I think the simplest thing to do will be just to glue the door straight onto the uh, Revel plastic and then fix the hinges afterwards. So the uh, latches here bend inwards and the tops of them just turns down a little bit. So obviously they're very very delicate. I'm not going to be able to mess around with those too much. Just fold the hinge down to the side like that. So I have three of those to make. This uh, larger locker has two doors. So 
the uh, latches look reasonably all right from viewing them in uh, the raw if you like without any primer it'll be easier to see whether or not they're uh, in the right position once I've primed the locker so we'll just leave them alone for the moment this uh, part here is for the locker that isn't provided in the Revel kit this locker has got uh, an extension piece at the bottom so it kind of sits on a little extension there the base of this locker fits into a couple of slots down at the bottom here so it's uh, important to make sure that that's located properly I'm not going to try and go all the way around the door here. Uh, I'll end up damaging the hinges if I try and do that. And there'll be too much clean up to do as well. So I'll just tack it in place really. And then once it's in position, we can move the latches again. Now that we've got those latches out of the way, I'll uh, put a tiny little bit more solder on that door. There we are, that's the uh, third style of locker that we've got in this part of the assembly. So obviously that must have been missed out of the Revel kit. The next parts are these three hatches three different assemblies but uh, they're all made in a similar sort of way these lids are a bit awkward to get to fit they've got to be trapped in between the uh, dogs which are on the side so you just have to move those slightly out of the way so that we can get the lid on but uh, they're not the easiest thing to assemble I'm not going to risk uh, soldering this I'm quite likely to make a mess of it so instead I'll just use some thin super glue and just position the lid up to the dogs just get the lid position there these hatches are quite awkward to put together really and that's because the lid has got some tiny cutouts in them which have to fit into the dogs those are the small latches here around the side and they're on three faces so you've got to squeeze the lid in and at the same time get the dogs into the slots in those six positions and I haven't soldered that what I've done is uh, once I've got the lid into position I've just put some thin super glue on the inside and used some accelerator to set that hard uh, and then the dogs can be positioned again so that they're nice and straight so uh, they're amongst the most difficult things I think to make out of etch brass I'd love to have those in resin or 3d printed they'd be much easier save a lot of time so that's one out of the way the next one is a slightly different arrangement 
this one leans up against the uh, front bulkhead of the wheelhouse. And there are some fairly awkward angles on this. You can see the side has that wedge shape, so we've got to bend the top to match. Because it's such an awkward shape, I'll just need to hold that together with some tape. But once that's together, we can take this part here, which is the frame and has all the dogs on it. In this case, I'm going to open this hatch slightly so I can just put the dogs straight on I don't need to bend them up that's the position that the dogs would be in uh, if the hatch were open uh, when the hatch was closed the dogs folded up and screwed down to uh, lock the hatch in position but uh, before I do any of that I want to put it on its base So I'll just glue that in position, just use a bit of thin super glue. And then last I can put the hatch lid on. I'm just going to have it slightly open. Sorry about that, it was just a pheasant having a panic. Just flew right over the top of the shed. Okay, that's the second hatch. And the last one, again we've got these uh, quite difficult lids to fit around the dogs. The base is the first job. I've swapped the tip on the soldering iron. You might have noticed it's different to the one that I normally use. Uh, this is a one millimeter horseshoe tip and it's a little bit better for getting into these tight little joins. So again, we just need to pull those dogs out of the way at the side. Just bend them outward slightly. And that should allow us just to slide the lid in place against the forward dogs. So just glue that in position. The lid has two little cutouts. They really are very difficult. Just locks into those uh, dogs at the front there. And then once we've got that in the right place, I'll just add some thin super glue. And I'm putting quite a bit in there because I want to solidify this glue with some accelerator. And then once that's glued in, we can bring the dogs back up onto the side. And again, we've got a base for this. I think building these hatches is one of my least favorite jobs on a ship. They're very, very fiddly and quite difficult to get a neat result with them. But uh, they're not too bad. The last locker to build uh, is the one that goes in front of the shield. Okay, so uh, see the dogs have folded up back through 90 degrees there. 
So uh, that's the last of the lockers. Next I want to tackle the main shield uh, that goes ahead of the wheelhouse. So we have this main part and a number of ribs that uh, we're going to glue inside. So the shield has a top which runs all the way along. Just bends down like that. And it's actually got an angle on it so you can see if you look at this part here we've got a slight undercut so this part here needs a double bend on it and hopefully when we fold this side down it should match up nearly just needs a little bit more I'll I'll just glue the strips on the inside these uh, frames but I want to make sure that this corner is good and strong so I'll tape that up and solder it so we've got these uh, tabs here at the bottom I've just noticed them on this part and I think that they're designed to fit into the Revel plastic deck, into the slots, which I've filled. But the uh, slots themselves in the plastic deck are much thicker than this brass. So I really don't think that uh, there would have been a neat fit anyway. So I'm going to have to sand those off or file those uh, tabs off just to make sure that this fits properly. That's quite a complicated uh, piece of brass, but uh, it's an accurate uh, piece of engineering from Pontos, so it actually fits together quite well. So uh, I just need to take these bottom tabs off and then fit the ribs on the inside. So each of these ribs needs to be folded. It's just got a return. Each one's got a return on it. And the easiest way to do this with a piece like this is just to press it down. So on the edge of the bench, off camera, but I'll just press that down against the bench where it's nice and flat and you get a nice square join on there. So with these parts, uh, Pontos have helped us a little bit because not only have they put the fold line down the back of the rib, but they've also uh, etched some little lines in the other side. Uh, you might just be able to see them there, those three slots. And they're called fast bends. And they just help to make sure that the part bends in a straight line. And what I'll do is just push that down against a hard surface on the edge of the bench and those fast bends just help the whole part to fold up in the right position. So that's how the shield should look with all the ribs in position. So I'll just bring the model over and we'll just make sure that all those parts are going to fit all right. The position of this shield uh, is partly determined with these braces. They fit onto the top flange of the shield and are braced against the underside uh, of the bridge structure here. So we have three of those that go something like that. 
So obviously we're going to have to do all the work behind here. We're not going to be able to get in once these braces uh, are in place. So it's just worth uh, test fitting that. So after a bit of thought, I've decided to fit these three braces here. These go up to the uh, underside of this structure here. And I've done that because I think it's just going to be easier to paint the whole assembly. And then the attachment point here is underneath a strip of brass that I fitted uh, last time. And we can just tuck those braces underneath and position the shield where we want it. Uh, and we should be able to get a nice neat uh, finish doing it that way. You can see how they go up to the underside of the forward part of the bridge. I think that's much easier pre-assembling it like that than trying to manoeuvre those little brass uh, braces because I'd still have to come in and touch all the paintwork up as well. So, so I think that's a better option to do it like that. We'll see anyway. So I've got all the shields, the lockers and hatches constructed. There's just one or two uh, bits of Revel plastic that I need to cut out and paint as well whilst I'm in this vicinity. There are various pieces that go on the sides of the bridge wings here. So I'll identify and cut all those out and then we can paint all this uh, assembly and go over to the front bench and get them all fitted. So we've got our usual uh, fun and games here trying to find the parts on the Revel sprue just because the numbering is so haphazard. You've got to really search around the sprues for these bits. So these Revel plastic parts, these small bits and pieces, they're going to take quite a bit of cleaning up. There are uh, mould lines around the sides of them. So they're all going to need to be tidied up. And some of them are pretty small, so it's not the easiest job to get these cleaned. But it's worth doing it. The parts will look the parts will look very nice if we don't uh, just spend that bit of time on them. You can see holding on to these isn't that easy. So it's a shame that they've got so much flash on them that needs cleaning up. These small detail parts are an indication of the uh, quality of the kit really. It's not the best moulded and it really shows up on these parts. They need an awful lot of clean up to make them presentable. Okay so all the parts are ready for priming. These are mounted on double sided tape and these tiny Revel plastic parts are just uh, pushed into some holes in this uh, fibre board. So hopefully that will stay in place. So uh, I've got this on a fairly low pressure. It's about 15 psi. can see there what a nice finish we get with this Mr. Surfacer. 
and I get quite a few questions about uh, airbrush pressures and so on. So this is uh, sprayed at, as I said, about 15 psi, and the thinning ratio is about 50% uh, thinner to paint. And it goes on really nicely, as you can see, nice and smooth. So we'll uh, mix the Insignia white and get these parts uh, painted up. So again, with the white, it's, uh, the Tamiya lacquer paint's thinned about 50% thinners. And that's with Tamiya's own retarder thinners. And the pressure's been turned down to about 10 psi for this. That's the white on, and we'll get over to the front bench and get those parts fitted now, I think. Okay, we'll fit the detail parts now. And before approaching this, I've gone in and drilled out all the location holes with a 0.6mm drill. That's just to make sure that the parts fit properly. And I'll be using a mixture of thick super glue for this. And in some cases, I'll use some of the MIG uh, Ultra Glue. This is the acrylic glue. And I've also, on the tweezers, I'm using some round nose tweezers for this. And I've just wrapped the end of the tweezers in some masking tape. That just cushions the part a little bit and just prevents them getting scratched. It's important to get these lined up properly, otherwise they will look a bit of a mess. It's one of our hatches to fit here. Just take care to make sure we get the right one. There's a davit to fit at the back here, but I think that's in the Pontos set. I'll have to go back later on and probably fit that next time because I've not made it up. So I'll do that when I come to fit the frames at the side. So I look into the front of the bridge now and we've got some uh, lockers and a hatch to fit here against the bridge bulkhead. But there are also some pillars which go just ahead of those, which are these. And I've had to make these up from uh, one millimeter strip styrene because the plastic uh, supports that were provided in the Revel kit uh, were too short to bridge this space. 
so I've just measured those again and uh, cut them to size so that they will fit exactly in there. They're also, being styrene strip, they're also a more consistent shape than the Revel parts as well. So all round that's a better option I think. But before we can fit those we'll put the locker and the hatch that we need on this bulkhead. Now we can fit the supports. And again, just want to make sure that those are vertical. So uh, I think they're a big improvement. So now the lockers can go in. Now we've got the job of uh, fitting the shield. To fit the uh, shield I'm going to be using some of this MIG Ultra Glue and the reason for using it is that if I get any on the deck I'll just be able to wipe it off. I'm just going to put glue on the bottom of the braces on the inside and hopefully that won't show too much. And then when I've got the shield in the correct position I'll just go back and put some super glue on the three braces here. So with the shield in position, I'll just glue the top of the braces to the forebridge. These will need touching up. Where well, we've got the glue on the parts there. But those braces do add quite a bit of strength And this last locker, again, I'm going to use some of the MIG. There's very little uh, contact point with these lockers. There are just two feet. And they just rest up against the 
shield that we've just fitted. So uh, there's not a lot of contact point at all on these. So uh, I'm going to have to leave that still until the MIG Ultra has gone off. It'll take a good hour for that to set. So I'm not going to be able to touch that for a while. OK, so that's the front shield in and the lockers all fitted. And overall, that's not gone in too badly. It's not as good as I would have hoped. I've still got some glue to clean up on that part. And the problem really is getting a firm location point for the shield. You might remember that I filled the holes in the Revel deck uh, because they were too big. But actually it might have been better to leave those in and use the tabs on this Pontos shield just to locate that a little bit easier. Uh, the downside of doing that is that you will be left with some quite large slots in the deck at the back you might have been able to see them so neither way is completely perfect uh, but overall that's not too bad as i said just a little bit of touching up and that should smarten that up a little bit there is uh, an aerial array to go on the front of the uh, bridge here and that goes down onto this assembly. So I won't bother touching this up yet until I've fitted that radar array. Uh, which I might be doing in the next episode. But it is quite an exposed piece of assembly. So I might uh, leave that off until a bit later on in the build. Okay, so that's the forward shield uh, all fitted. It went in reasonably well. I think if I were doing it again I'd make some uh, alterations to that. I wouldn't have filled the slots in in the revel deck it would have gone in a little bit easier i think and as a result uh, i've got one or two spots of glue that are going to need tidying up uh, and retouching before the next episode so i'll do that over the next few days and then i'll move on and fit the detail parts uh, that i built i think three episodes ago to this central superstructure just ahead of the funnel and whilst I'm in that area, I'll fit a couple of platforms that are left off the bridge uh, and just finish off really this centre section uh, of the model. And that's in line with the way I tend to approach ships, which is from the centre line towards the sides of the ship and also fore and aft working from the centre as much as I can. So we'll get this whole area in the middle of the ship finished in the next part. So over the next few days I want to finish off on the Vulcan build uh, which has been running uh, for quite a while now. I've just been fitting the Vulcan in in between finishing the hood and starting on this uh, flower class. But there's very little to do on that now. So over the next few days I'll be finishing that uh, Vulcan build off uh, and getting the last part of that playlist out uh, early next week. I'll then be able to move on to the next aircraft subject which I'll be tackling and I'll be doing a preview video uh, on that next aircraft build uh, once the Vulcan's out of the way. But as far as the flower class goes there'll be as usual uh, the next part which is part 11 uh, next Friday at the usual time 8 o'clock. So I hope you can join me for that. So in the meantime look after yourselves everybody stay safe. Enjoy your modelling and I'll see you in another seven days for the next part of the Corvette build. Bye for now.